Hey, this is Horner again, and we're going to go ahead and go through number 6 through number 10 on our constant velocity problem exercises. For number 6, we do have Hans. He is at the Grand Canyon, and so we're going to draw the cliff here. Hans is standing up here, and he yodels down into the cliff. When he does that, the sound goes down to the bottom of the cliff, hits the ground, comes back up, and he hears the echo of his yodel. It takes about uh, 5.2 seconds for that to happen, so we have that. And we know that the speed of sound, or the velocity of sound, is about 340 meters per second. We only really need half of this time, and that's because notice that it goes down and comes back up. So we don't want the total time it takes, we only want half of it. So we're going to divide this time by 2, and we end up with 2.6 seconds. Now we can solve our problem. For this problem, uh, they want us to figure out how deep the gorge is, or how far down it is. So we know that average speed, and we'll go ahead and make this speed, is equal to the final position minus the original position, all divided by time. We really want just this, so let's plug everything in, 340 meters per second is equal to, and we're going to call this delta x, so that's just another way to write xf minus xo, and we're going to divide that by our time, which is 2.6 seconds. In order to get the 2.6 on the other side, I multiply both sides by 2.6, and when I'm done, I find out that my change in position, or the depth of the canyon, is 884 meters. You also could have just solved using the 5.2. You would have found that the uh, total um, displacement would have been, or the distance there, really would have been twice this. You'd have to divide it by 2. So at that point, you would, uh, you'd be done. So nonetheless, answer should be 884 meters. Just to review one more time, you would need an equation. You would need the equation filled in, the number, and the correct unit in order to get all the points for this problem. For number seven, uh, this one's a little bit different. Uh, it says that Destiny completes a lab in the physics room, and when she does that, she starts a bowling ball. And that bowling ball is right here, and she's on the left end of a meter stick, and that meter stick says that this is at negative 0.23 meters. Bowling ball is rolling to the right. Maybe we have a meter stick sitting here. So the other end of the meter stick is on the other side, so she's at negative 0.23. And we've got another meter stick here, so that our zero is here. She has the ball roll several meters to the right, so we could look at this as just several meter sticks. I'm really sloppy, sorry about that. And the final position of the ball is probably about right here, and that would be at 3.35 meters. So here's our original position, and here is our final position. The ball rolls with a velocity equal to 2.15 meters per second. And the thing that they want us to solve for here is how long it takes for it to roll that far. We know that our average speed is equal to our final position minus our original position, all divided by time. And if we solve this for time, we just flop the two, the velocity and the time, because I multiply both sides by time, divide both sides by velocity. It's easier just to switch those two. So time here is equal to the final position minus the original position, all divided by the average velocity. Final position here is 3.35 meters minus, and notice that we have to put the negative in on our XO, so negative 0.23. So in reality, you're actually adding those two numbers together. Uh, you take that and divide it by the average velocity, which was 2.15, and you'll end up with your final answer which is 1.67 seconds. And that is number 7 in the uh, problems packet. Let's look at number 8. The per peregrine falcon is the world's fastest known bird. It's clocked uh, diving downward with an average velocity of about 97.2 meters per second. Our final uh, minus original position is equal to 100 meters. That's the distance that this uh, peregrine falcon goes, or in this case it would also be the displacement. They want to know how much time does this give the rabbit below to consider his next move before that falcon um, actually comes all the way down to the ground. So we're looking for time again. As we did in the last problem, we can say that velocity is equal to change in position 
over the change in time. This, uh, this time let's go ahead and just plug our numbers in. Last time we rearranged the equation. This time let's be lazy and just do this. And we have a change in position of 100 meters. And we're going to divide all that by time. If I do this, now I've got to go ahead and rearrange everything. So I've got 100 on this side. And then down on the bottom we've got 97.2. So all I did here was I multiplied both sides by time. And I also divided both sides by 97.2. So that makes it a little bit, uh, little bit more messy. That's why sometimes it's easier if you have 97.2 equals 100 over t. You can just cross multiply both sides. If I uh, actually set this over 1 is what I should do. Then I can go back and I can cross multiply. So this would be 100 on the top and then on the left side I would have that uh, 97.2 times t. Um, I'd have the t and then I'm just flipping these. So t on this up on the top, 97.2 on the bottom. 100 divided by 97.2 and that will give us our answer. And that answer is 1.03 seconds. Probably made that one a little harder than what I wanted to. But it's done. That's the important thing. Uh, and we have the correct answer with the correct unit. So uh, let's go on to number 9. For number 9, when we look at it, we see that this one is about uh, a gentleman who's 85 years old and he throws a frisbee. When he throws that frisbee, uh, he threw the distance, so that's our XF minus XO, is equal to 54 meters. We know that it was thrown with an average velocity of about 13 meters per second. And they want to know how long did it stay in the air. So uh, we're going to do the same thing one more time for number 9. Uh, we're going to say that the velocity is equal to, and then we've got our change in position, so XF minus XO, all divided by the time. Let's go ahead and plug everything in. 13 meters per second is our velocity. We know that XF minus XO is 54. We're looking for time. If we rearrange this equation, we can just switch the T and the 13. And now we have 54 divided by 13. Remember, it's not 54 thirteenths. You really need to convert this into a fraction to get full credit, I mean into a decimal equivalent. So 4.15 seconds is how long that Frisbee was in the air. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty long time. The last one that we are going to do for this section is number 10. And for number 10, we have a tortoise and a hare. They are in a road race. The tortoise itself uh, goes ahead and crawls the entire distance in one fell sloop. So we're going to put tortoise, T-O-R-T-O-I-S-E. Uh, and uh, we know that this tortoise does this distance of 1,000 meters, so that's our XF minus XO, and does that at a whopping speed, or velocity, equal to 0.2 meters per second. So we need to find out how long it takes. So we know that time here, and we've done a few of these, is equal to XF minus XO all over our um, velocity, which is 0.2. Uh, and we, so we can just we're going to write the equation first, I think. So here's our velocity. Now we can plug everything in. XF minus XO would be 1,000 meters. I'm going to divide that by 0.2 meters per second. And for the tortoise, we end up with a total time of 5,000 seconds. The hare is a little bit different. The hare is a bunny rabbit, so that bunny rabbits are usually pretty quick compared to turtles. The uh, hair goes through three segments, and segment number one, so we'll put S1, this uh, little animal, uh, we want to find out how long it takes for it to go 2,000 meters, so it likes to kind of go out of the way. Goes, uh, the first leg does, uh, oops, 200 meters, so I'm going to change this. So this would be 200 meters at two seconds. So we end up here with 100 seconds. In the second segment, the tortoise uh, does something a little bit different, takes a nap for a time equal to 1.3 hours. So we need to convert this to seconds. Pretty easy to do. 
I know that in one hour I have 60 minutes and then in one minute I have 60 seconds. So now I can go through and do my math and I end up with uh, 4,680 seconds. Finally in the third segment uh, he wakes up and realizes he's going to get behind so he um, uses our same equation we did before our uh, displacement is 800 meters and he covers that 800 meters using an average speed of about 3 meters per second so if you divide those two it's 266.7 seconds what we need to do with all of these times is add them together so we're going to take the 100 seconds the 4680 seconds and the 267 266.7 seconds and add them together. So now I get a time of 5,047 seconds for the hair. So the tortoise wins. So the tortoise wins by 47 seconds because it took him 47 less seconds to do this. And that is number 10. That's our last one. Uh, go ahead and watch the next video. It will show you how to solve number 11 through number 15.